You have some hand? <laughs> what? What do you want? <laughs> Put a DIY this morning? <laughs> Put a DIY. Does it look like it, doesn't it? I'm making um, this. I've made this quite a few times. Now, you have had this. So, I'm not going to have any of your nonsense today about, I don't know what it's happening. I don't get any nice food. Can you just take me out? Say, hard done by. Rubbish. Um, you've had this a few times, but you've had it with peas. Um, so this is like a pea so and it's feta. it's then, is it? <sighs> can't believe you're bringing that up again. Anyway, for anybody that doesn't watch it, you've got to watch the, the Smoke Time and Kedgeri film for that one. Um, but I don't have any peas. I have a couple of manky courgettes, so I thought I'd use those instead before they went over. Um, so this is a... There, there is a spinach pie, um, a Greek spinach pie. It's very, very famous, and it's called Spakalopalopalopica. I can't, <laughs> I can't pronounce the name of it. Spanalopalopica. My friend Harry, who watches these, Harry, um, he'll know how to pronounce it, and he'll be just rolling his eyes right now. But anyway, Harry, I'm very sorry, I can't say it. It's kind of a little bit like that, but um, I'm going to be using a little few extra vegetables, and I've um, got courgettes, a mint, and feta and some spinach and this other cheese just here which is called Pearl Wen which is um, another of the cheeses that we bought from uh, the wonderful Cows Knarf Dairy in Wales. Um, we have to help our cheese makers. This weekend, I'm going to do a little bit more about it, but there's something called British Cheese Weekender happening and I shall put the information on my Instagram page. We have to help, if, if at all possible, all our wonderful artisan cheese makers around Britain because they are really struggling. Um, they're, they're having to throw away milk, they're having to throw away cheese because obviously with the, the virus and the restaurant industry just coming away, their income dropped, no one wants to buy it. So, But we can buy it. So have a little look at that info and I won't talk about it anymore, but that's one of the cheeses. And I've got a few more cheeses coming this week that I'll be cooking with. Um, anyway, this one, where am I? You wanted this to be a short one today, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so phyllo In pastry. My <laughs> phyllo pastry, you can buy it. In, in the supermarket, really cheap. Um, and I'm just going to layer this dish. So it's a deep fluted um, flan tin with buttered layers of phyllo until we get a nice base. Um, I probably do about six layers in here just to make sure it's completely watertight um, for when I put the filling in. And I tend to do it, like, sort of move it around a little bit more so it looks like a star to make sure it covers all angles. So this is three, this is the no, two layers here. So I'm going to carry on. You can do something magical with the time lapse and I'll come back. Ta-da! As if by magic. As if by magic. Um, so I did about six layers there of the feeler. So you can see now it's all well covered. And it's going to get lovely and crispy as well around the outside. It's a really, really such a scrumptious tart. So just pop that over there. And in here, I've got oh, a packet of... Back in again. Oh, sorry. Pack of feta, feta cheese in there. Okay, which you see at the bottom. And um, some spinach. This is frozen leaf spinach. They come in little nuggets. I keep it in the freezer. It's completely brilliant stuff. You can pop it into a stew, a curry, any sort of dish. Straight from the freezer. But also, you know, it, when you buy fresh spinach, which I love... When you cook it down, it cooks to nothing. So this is kind of already cooked down to nothing. So you kind of get a little bit more for your money in a way and that it's already done for you. So just take the um, leaf spinach out and give it a really good squeeze. I could probably get more liquid out. See that, I've already squeezed them once. Um, and then I'm going to break the feta into that, into sort of crumble it all up. Love feta cheese. You don't need as much salt as you think now when you get a little bit of salt into this mixture, but it gets very salty feta, so you don't need a lot of it. Um, a lot of salt that is, not the feta. Oh God, you'll never have enough feta. I love baked feta. We love that, don't we? We just bake it in the oven. That's another day, I'll show you that. Um, okay, so that's in there. I've got some fresh mint from the garden, which I've chopped up. That's going in. And then here is the courgettes and leeks I cooked a little bit earlier with some oregano in plenty of delicious, actually I had some Greek olive oil, so keeping that theme going. That goes in as well. Smells good, doesn't it? So 
smells really good. in here, which I might make it four, and two, three, four, a tiny bit of milk, not too much, just a little bit, and I'm going to get my hands in and give it a good mix around. All the spinach, veggies are coming together nicely. All right, so that's now ready to go into my pie. So I'm going to put half of it in. That. Half on the bottom. Okay, and then more cheese. I'm going to put some of the pearl, pearl wen in, in the middle. So that's like a, <clears throat> it's a brie. brie type. Yeah, it's a soft cheese. Oh, it isn't it wonderful? Mm. It's such a beautiful cheese. We've had quite a lot of it lately. It's still going, still got some left, but we have to use it up because it's soft and they don't last as long, obviously, as hard cheeses. But there we go. So, in the middle of this, you're just going to have this lovely, <laughs> runny cheese in between the spinach and the feta as well. Like it sounds like it's going to be quite nice, this. And then the rest of this on top. And then the final thing on top of this if I had some pine kernels, I'd put some pine kernels in actually, but I don't have any, so I can't. But that would be quite a nice little, a few toasted pine kernels in here dotted around would be quite nice. Um, and, it, and dill goes really well in there as well, and that's very traditional to this pie. But again, I've got what I've got. So I'm just going to now just finish it off with a couple of layers of phyllo, which going to do this with just that just screw them up a bit like a scrunched up tissue like a scrunched up tissue exactly. actually I can't do that because I haven't got enough oh it's okay there we go yeah we'll just do it and then this little beauty is going to be baked in the oven um, I think I might, I, I have to be honest I haven't done it with the um, phyllo on top that was something I just thought I'd do today so I've just got to keep an eye on it, so I don't want it to burn. So I think I'm going to start it off at about 160. I know, that's controversial, isn't it? Not 180, 160. And then I'll see how it goes. So I'll keep an eye on it. And when I eventually put the recipe up, it'll, I'll have a better idea of the exact timings and everything. So there we go. And I'm just going to tuck it in around here as well. So it's all cosy warm. And then when it's all done, I shall bring it out of the oven and hopefully it'll be completely wonderful. So, this took a little longer in the oven than I thought it was going to do. Um, and I said 160 degrees fan. Um, I did 160 for about 45 minutes and then I did about 20 at 180. So, I turned, so then it would turn brown and completely set in the middle. The thing with it is it's quite a deep pie this. And also I didn't want to burn the phyllo, so I just took it a bit steady to begin with and then gave it a little bit of a, a bit more heat just towards the end. And then now everything's going to be cooked in the middle as well. Right, so just pop it on an upturned pudding basin and that will help just release the sides. Um, in this, 
you can see in this baking tin, there's a lot of fat that's come out of this. So when you cook it in the oven, do pop it on a tray in the oven to catch any. That's just the butter that I used in the filo. So even I put it in there, it actually came out, didn't it? No, not so bad. Do you think that looks nice? Looks lovely. I'm quite pleased with it, actually. Well, it's very pretty. Yeah, I'm quite pleased. It does look really pretty, doesn't it? Um, you could sprinkle some sesame seeds on top, I was thinking. It'd be quite nice um, as well. Now... The cutting of it is going to be interesting. It could just completely fall apart for me. I'm going to try with a bread knife. I thought it might be the best thing to start with. Um, so let me just go down. Oh, let's give it a little go coming out. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Hold on, I just need a plate. I've got my plate over there. That mm, looks really scrumptious. If you just have a little look inside, you can see all the different layers of the courgette and then this sort of molten pearl wen in the middle of the brie. So, John, I'm going to do as I always do, which is very selfless of me. I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to give it a little, a little go. See what it's like. lost for words. Can you believe that? I know, it's a rare occurrence, isn't it? But that is so good. That um, pearl wen in the middle, you can use brie if you can't get hold of that, um, or a brie type, a soft cheese, just goes so well with the feta. And the feta's got a little bit more texture and it's given the saltiness to it. And then that spinach and the courgettes and the oregano, everything, everything! I'm gonna swear and say bloody lovely. Please give that a go. It is such a simple, easy dish to throw together. Just takes a little while in the oven, um, but oh, it's really worth it.